What's going on, people? Once again, welcome to Every Man's Millionaire. Today, we're going to talk about hard work. Yes, hard work. There are many people out here who are lying to you. And as a testament to my hard work, I'm going to prove some stuff to you in this video. But before we get into that, I want to say thank you to all of my old subscribers and thank you to my new subscribers because a lot of you are starting to get it. Um, some of the older subscribers have actually just gotten in. They started working and they're seeing results, but they're not seeing results in a week. They're not seeing results in a month. Some of you have been grinding for years, two years, three years, four years, and it's starting to happen. So congratulations to you guys. I'm proud of you. Uh, to the new folks, once again, just to set some ground rules to what we do here. If you didn't know, Glendon Cameron, your hustling godfather, and what we do is we start businesses, we start hustles, and we talk about money and the economy here. And I'm not here to candy coat the message. I'm not here to blow smoke up your ass and tell you that you're going to be a millionaire in two or three years because more than likely you're not. But if you work hard, if you apply yourself, the chances of you being a millionaire in 10 to 15 years is very great. But that's the problem. Right now, we have so many people. Uh, I saw two videos that were talking about Grant Cardone, uh, Gary V. And both of these people, or three people who are talking about this, are nowhere near as successful as Grant Cardone, Gary V. They're not. And they're already, and one even said for four years he did follow the Gary V. method, and that was the launch pad to his success. I want you, and I was just sitting there like, really? One of the reasons that I'm in the position where I'm at is because of hard work. Long, thankless, hard work. And there's this new message that you don't have to work hard. You, you don't have to apply yourself. There's some hack. There's some algorithm. It's not true. I have seen several people whose businesses have completely been shut down because Facebook changed an algorithm. I've seen plenty of folks who were dependent upon YouTube AdSense literally stop making videos when they changed the rules. If you work hard and you build your business correctly, you're not going to have to worry about these problems. I have one of the smaller YouTube channels, but I just went to Vid Summit, talked to some people. I make more money than 95% of these YouTubers. Why? Because I have a real business that's built on hard work. It's not a fantasy. It's not something that's just going to disappear because, you know, YouTube, if I did YouTube the way that YouTube wants me to do it, I would have probably three, 400,000 subscribers, but I would only be making six or $7,000 a month. I make that in a week. I make that in a week. And part of the problem is that many people are lying to you, blowing smoke up your ass to sell you something. Once again, I sell stuff, but I tell you, you're going to make an investment up front for a few weeks, a few months before you start seeing any returns. That's the truth. That's just reality. And a lot of you are like, hey, Glendon, I don't have time to wait for that. And for you folks, watch the free information and do Craigslist and do eBay and do Amazon and get your money right so you can buy a course. I have no problem with that. But I do have a problem with people who want outstanding results for nothing or very cheaply. One of the things, you people are not real with yourself. You're not real with society. I want you to think about this. You want something for $99.99 that's going to make you hundreds to thousands or tens or even hundreds of thousands of dollars. If you really sat down and said this out loud, I'm going to buy this course for $99 and it's going to make me a million bucks in two months. That doesn't make sense. And if you start asking yourself these questions and be real and get into life the way that life really is, you will not be bamboozled. You will not be fooled. But once again, so what I'm going to do is present some older content. And for, once again, for the new subscribers, thank you. For the old subscribers who apply yourself, hats off. Appreciate you guys. Uh, for you folks who are looking for something for nothing or just watching for this one magic, mythical nugget that's just going to change your life, you just kill yourselves. 
because you've been here long enough that if you've applied the lessons that I put out five years ago, six years ago, seven years ago, you would be where you needed to be. So the fact that you're not where you need to be means you are playing games and you're, you're half-stepping. So I ain't talking to you. And if you come in and put in a comment, I have seen this video before, but did you take action, motherfucker? Because if you saw it five, six, seven, eight years ago when you didn't take action, you'd be boo-boo the fool. We're about to go through a hellacious recession next 15, 20 months. And there are many of you who are not prepared. And there's a chance for you to get prepared if you stop playing games, if you stop looking for the quick fix. So what I want you to do is to watch this video 10 times. Yes, I want you to watch this video 10 times because it's going to take you applying yourself. It's going to take focus. I don't know if you saw that fight last night between um, Crawford and Benes, and Crawford just tore that dude apart. He just stalked him and he stalked him. And I think the level of patience and concentration that you got to stay on game plan for 12 rounds while your, your, your lungs are on fire. Similar thing to business. You got to execute, you got to concentrate, and you got to put out, even though it doesn't look like you're getting that much back in. It, it's just a reality. But for those of you who are prepared, you're going to thank me. For those of you who are like, eh, Glenn is just trying to sell me some. I don't want this information. Wait 15, 20 months and see what happens. And I don't want to hear any whining. I don't want to hear any, I don't want to hear anything because I'm prepared. I have no debt. I have no car payments. I have no credit card payments. And I got money in the bank because I'm ready for this thing. Like I was ready in 2009. I started this channel during a recession and that's the proof. 2009 to 2018, small channel, but I'm still making more money than 97% of these YouTubers out here because I created a real business based upon hard work. Hard work. Wrap your brain around that. Let these quick notions go. When you start a YouTube channel, when you start a podcast, you start a Facebook group, go ahead and say, I'm in this for at least three years then that's gonna make everything so much different. Your decision-making ability is gonna be so much different than I'm trying to come up in two weeks, six months. It takes a good year or two unless you're exceptional to build a exceptional YouTube channel. This just, I'm just keeping it real, all right? So do me a solid, go below, get on the text notification list because there's a lot of hot content coming your way and YouTube's not gonna send you a notification. And if people ask why, it's YouTube's channel, it's Cameron's Law. At some point, all third party platforms act and behave in their own best interest. I'm behaving in my best interest and they're behaving in their best interest. And whoever does the better job wins. That's just how it is. So I'm not asking for subscribers. I want you on my list. I want you on my email list. I want you to buy something so I can communicate to you with you whenever I want to. Because once again, YouTube does not send out notifications. So get on that list, it's the first link below. Let's get into this vintage content. I know you're sitting there just chilling out. Maybe you just got off work, popped a beer, and you're thinking, what the fuck am I doing with my life? Yeah, I'm talking to you, Marcus. Yes, you. You're sitting there. And you just wonder, and it's like, God, it's almost a weekend. I can't wait to the weekend because Monday sucks. Tuesday sucks. Wednesday sucks. Thursday sucks. And Friday halfway sucks because it's too long. You get out of there as soon as you can, Marcus. You leave. You're out of there because every day, little piece of you dies now Marcus how'd you end up here I'm gonna tell you you fell prey to this thing that we have in our society of don't work hard work smart work very smart and I've really dissected that anything that I have been marginally successful to extremely successful doing I've worked my ass off. And I, I have to think about that, Marcus. I have to sit back and I'm like, okay, what is it about hard work that creates such a distraction? 
I had to pull it apart. Marcus, I, I mean, seriously, man, I, I really had to think about this. I had to take a different look. Because the thing is, I was brought up on the tail end of the baby boomers to the Generation XY. I'm like Generation Y, but I'm a boomer. So I'm kind of like I speak boomer and Y and G and also Z, Marcus. And I thought about it. I was brought up working hard was noble. I was brought up that a good day's work was something to be proud of. Now, at the intersection of technology and life skills and lifestyles and social values, things kind of went all fucked up because working hard. And I'm going to give you some examples, Marcus. Say you are tasked to build this brick wall and the bricks are way over there. They're way yonder. As as they say in Alabama, yonder, they're yonder over there. And your job is to go all the way over there and bring those bricks to the wall. And then someone else stacks the bricks to create the wall. So this, you have this procession of work and you're going to get those bricks and in the beginning, it's not that bad, but every brick, it gets heavier. That 20 feet gets longer. Your back hurts. Your forearms swell up because you're working hard. The problem is you're working hard in the wrong area. Many people have worked very hard in the wrong area. So... Here's this thing that comes out of don't work hard, work smart. But no one is saying you should work hard, but you should work hard in the right area. That's the disconnect. That's the problem, like getting an education, you'll make more money. That part's true. The disconnect was an education. Is it a college degree? Is this a secondary degree? Is it a vocation? Is it self-knowledge? Is it just stumbling upon something and finding out you're good? The answer is all of the above. The problem is when you say education, the common definition between the man and the woman on the street, Marcus, is you got the college degree. The truth of the matter is the most educated people in our society make the most money. But once again, what is education? I never stopped learning. Marcus, never stopped learning. When I was in the storage auction business, it was fun, made money, had a good time. But something that I missed, I learned how to do many different things. So many things. I mean, just every day I was learning something new. Oh, Lee Crochet, I believe, it's a pot. It's this enamel pot they make over yonder across the pond. And people will pay you 40 bucks for a lid. I learned that little things that go on the side of the pot for certain cookery that they don't make anymore, people will pay you 40 bucks for those. I learned that a little piece of yellow metal named a cougar ran could be worth at the time 450 and today it's worth like 1300 these are things i did not know when i jumped into the storage auction business i didn't know that in the state of georgia a person can sell another person a gun in a parking lot and it's perfectly legal you do that in new jersey and you're caught you're going to jail i learned that in the storage auction business so with education the more you have the better you are However, what is education, Marcus? That's the conundrum. That's the thing that drives people to distraction. Because you have people right now who are working very hard. You might be one of them, Marcus. You might have to write a term paper tonight about a subject you don't give shit about that will not put any money in your pocket. But you will work hard. Your brow will sweat. You'll sweat. You might get a headache. You might get tired of reading that fucking textbook. But you're working hard. But is your hard work in the right area? 
2009, I just pulled a wild hair out my ass and decided that I was going to write a book. Didn't know what I was doing. Made many errors. Had people laughing and pointing and talking all kind of smack. Some of the people who was talking the loudest smack actually tried to write books two or three years later and miserably failed. But during that period of July 15th, 2009 to October, I learned so much. Book covers, Amazon, F, not Amazon FB, but Amazon Create Space program, which is totally different today than it was back then. You can load the book up today, get the proof today, have a book shipped to your house in two days. Kindle, same thing. Load the book in the morning, it's live on their site by lunchtime. Used to take days. So there were so many things you had to learn. How Shrivener, which is a word processing program for writers which is extremely robust, which means the learning curve is like a hockey stick. Learn, learn, learn. So from July 15th, Marcus, to October, I learned more in those few months than some people my age have learned in the last 10 years. And that's the issue. Because people are trying to work smart, but not work hard. But once you... If you don't know if your hard work is in the right area, how do you know if you're working smart? You might be thinking you're working smart and you might be working Billy Buck dumbass hard. And no, it's not going to get you what you want. You're going to be in the same place. You're going to still be mad. You're going to be despondent. You're going to be <sighs> unhappy, Marcus very very unhappy so how do we solve this conundrum of working not working hard or working smart well I'm gonna give you a few steps this is something that no one else will tell you but as a uh, fizzle who's in Saudi Arabia Uncle Glendon it all begins with you see all of the stuff about working hard working smart with little regard to your proclivities, little regard to what you want to be in life, little regard to what makes you happy, what little real regard to what makes your heart go pitter patter, you are actually working hard or attempting to work smart in someone else's program that you may not even like, but because it sounds good on paper when someone that you don't know, you don't care about, comes up to you and say, hey, Marcus, what are you doing? Well, you know, I got two jobs and I'm in school. Yay. Oh, yeah. Props are around. Marcus is great. But right now, Marcus, you got a bottle in your mouth because you're fucking despondent. You're depressed. Your dick doesn't even get hard for your girlfriend anymore because you're so fucking stressed out. She thinks it's her, but it's really you. Marcus. But you're working smart, right? You're doing everything that other people expect of you, yet you have no idea what to expect from yourself because you're working so damn smart. Now, how do we solve this? Number one, you've got to ask yourself, what do you want out of life, Marcus? Not what your mother wants for you, not what your uncle or your grandparents or the people in the neighborhood. What do you want for yourself, Marcus? Have you ever thought about it? Have you ever said, hey, this is for me. This is good. This is what I want. This is what's going to make me happy. This is what's going to make me wake up in the morning and go, what up, world? This is a great day because I'm doing what I want to do. I'm doing things that interest me. I'm doing things that make me money. I'm doing things that... I'm proud to tell people that, hey, this is, I'm Marcus, I'm an architect, I'm Marcus, I am a scientist, I'm Marcus, I'm an entrepreneur, Mark, I'm Marcus, I'm a writer, I'm Marcus, I'm a hustler, I'm something that, because see, it doesn't matter what you do, it matters how well you do it, and how happy you are to do it, because people can sense incongruency, 
you're like, yeah, I'm doing all this stuff. Because you talk to someone and they're telling you about all this stuff, but their body's all tight and they're looking down. and It's just shame all over their face because they know that they're not where they want to be. But they do it anyway because of social expectations. That's who you should be. And that's what you should do. And you should be damn happy because someone told you those things should make you happy. But they don't. They leave you depleted. They leave you unhappy. They leave you in a state of despondency where you're out chasing some happiness and bliss to dull a pain. So once you get what you need to do, Marcus, what you should be doing with your life, once you figure that out, and if you never thought about it, it's gonna be a painful process because the first problem is where the hell do I start? And I can help you with that. You must give yourself permission to choose. Many people are waiting on permission to do whatever they want to do. And it's like, well, I, I would do X and Y and Z. And, but I'm just kind of waiting for the right time. Translation, I'm waiting on someone to validate that decision. I'm waiting on someone to approve me. I'm, oh, I'm waiting on someone to give me the green light. So figure that out, figure out what you want, figure out who you want to be. This is what I call creating a life of design and intent. Now, the thing is, if you don't think about these concepts or do you actually sit down and ponder your life, not your wants and whims, which is you want PlayStation or you want to watch a movie or you want to go to Cancun or no, no, those are wants and whims. What? will make you wake up every day without an alarm clock and be happy to be awake and to know that you are doing something that fulfills you. The second part, or maybe the third part, because the first part is figuring out who you want to be. The second part is giving yourself permission to go through the process. The third part is you're going to have to make some changes. You're going to have to do some internal renovation because see the person that you are right now. And this is why I laugh when people's like, love me the way that I am. I'm the best I can be is usually false. It's just false because if you're the best that you can be, Marcus, you wouldn't be drinking that bottle right now. You wouldn't be tying it up finding your favorite vein you wouldn't be smoked out all the time you would be high on life if you were the best you that you could be you wouldn't need all of these adulterated things to dull the pain or to jedi mind trick yourself that you're happy when you're fucking sad as shit so you're not the best that you can be marcus you're not even close you're not even in the zip code you're, you're, you're so far away from that. And that's why the process of figuring out who you want to be, what you want to be, is so damn daunting because you know that you're going to have to put on your backpack, get your walking stick, and go. And it's going to be a long fucking walk. It won't be easy. Now, this is the flip side because I will tell you, it's going to be hard. It's going to be painful. People may laugh at you because when you start talking about self-improvement, edification well that sounds like voodoo and hocus pocus but the people who know how to enhance increase and run that inner game they're running you they control the wall the world look it up bill gates learned how to do transcendental meditation in the boarding school prep school he was in he learned that before he got to college the inner mind the mental game it's supreme because once you get your mind together, your life will come together. Many people are crazy and don't know it because they're chasing a dream that was inoculated into their soul by someone who didn't really give a damn about them. So you're carrying someone else's dream. You're working 60 hours, going to school, denying yourself the simple pleasure of sitting at home and just chilling out and breathing because you're chasing dreams that other people gave you and told you they were tasty 
And even when your own tongue tells you that's some nasty shit, you still go, it's an acquired taste. It's not nasty. I'm just not sophisticated enough to enjoy this because it's an acquired taste. No, what you do is you get addicted to it so the taste doesn't matter because the high is more supreme than the taste. So you're walking around with this pocket full of dreams that someone gave you, working this life, working these jobs you hate, working around people that you can't fucking stand. Do you wonder why you're not happy? But see, you're working smart going to school you work in these jobs and I do applaud you for the delayed gratification because that's a skill set that's quite worthy to have however what good is delayed gratification if you're dead strange things happening more and more women are suffering diseases and early deaths that inherently were the domain of men because now many women are inheriting these stressors and they're taking them out. When you have someone that's 130 pounds, eats pretty healthily and dies from a heart attack or has one or two, that is called stress. And it's very stressful living in this society because many people are trying to work smart but not work hard. Now let me tell you what's gonna happen if you work hard. Things are gonna hurt. Things are gonna hurt. Things you will your mind is going to rebel because you are going to start thinking. You're going to start taking action. You're going to start doing this thing. And your mind is not used to that. It's like a muscle that's never been used. And you do a new exercise and the muscle's like, ooh, we, oh, what are you doing to me, Marcus? Oh, shit. Don't do that anymore. Then a few days, the pain goes away and you find yourself more flexible. The muscle a little bit stronger. You're like, oh, okay. All right, so I see what's going on here. So you're going to go through this process and you're going to go through that process of pain because you are growing your muscles. And one thing that happens when you work hard, you build struggle muscles. There are many people who have no struggle muscles. The minute a struggle pops up and hits them with the, not even, not even a bitch slap, not even like a Kung Fu chop. It's more like a thump, you know, oh. And they, they have to frame. They're gone from a thump because they have no struggle muscles. So when you work hard, you build resistance. You build struggle muscles. So then that, that struggle comes up and it thumps you and you be like, ha, 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 whatever. Then it's like, Kum. and you're like, what, what you got? You hit like a bitch struggle. Next thing you know, struggle is hitting you with blows from the left, body blows and everything. And you didn't even stagger. Because your struggle muscles are like top shape. Then all of a sudden, you start throwing blows on the struggle. And next thing you know, the struggle's like, oh, fuck. Let me go find someone else to fuck with. Because this motherfucker's too tough. Then you start to find yourself not struggling that much. Your muscles are so strong, you're like the Incredible Hulk. It's like it may be, you may be lifting a, fig, a city with your finger because your mu struggle muscles are so strong, it feels like a feather. That's the benefit of working hard. That's the benefit of going through the struggle. That's the benefit of stop playing games, figuring out what you want to do and applying yourself. That's what happens, Marcus. You become the fucking incredible Hulk and struggle be like, I don't live here no more. So hopefully, Marcus, you got something from this video. Hopefully, you're going to take that bottle from your lips or put down the smack or pa pass the blunt and don't take it back and begin to build yourself. Begin to be better than you were before. All right. If that hadn't got you motivated, I don't know what it is. What I want you to do right now is go below and enroll in game 105 in the art of holding. What these set of courses, it's not one course, it's a collection of courses on two platforms. Uh, some people say, is it $99 just one time? No, motherfucker, it ain't. If you, after all of these videos, think it's just one payment, kill yourself and exit this channel. But for those of you who are still here, this is what you get.
You get the legal strategies to protect yourself from child support, angry women, lawsuits. You get that in the art of holding. And in game 105, you learn how to date. You learn how to build your masculinity. You learn how to get a big dick. And you learn some more masculine traits because based on this Bono's commercial, they're just trying to run off the real men. But see, in that space is opportunity. The less real men, the less powerful, logical um, men who roll in their masculinity, who are happy to be masculine, the more pussy there's going to be for you. Me too means nothing to this. I'm telling you. And you go ahead and you get yourself together for this next recession. The things that you will be able to do. There's going to be a lot of content in the Game 105 that will not be on YouTube. That will eliminate and eliminate the bitch assness in you and help build you up. Now, for both of these platforms, it's $99.99 for 20 months. That's 2 k Once again, if you can't afford it, go to How to Start a Service Business, go to Craigslist, watch the channel, get the free con uh, information, and then get your money up and come back. Because what we're going to do is prepare men for the future. We're going to prepare men to be the masculine, happy, having all the sex they want, legally protecting themselves. Because uh, someone on a video put up, it was a female shaming tactic. Because I put in that video all my reasons why I fought my child support case. We had an agreement of joint custody. This stupid bitch thought that, hey, I should just pay child support, shut up, and go away. See, I held her accountable. I went to court for 14 months, and I held the mother of my child accountable. And a lot of people don't want to do that. Well, you're being mean. No, I'm holding her accountable because, see, sooner or later, the truth deals with us all. And she's going to have to deal with that truth in a very ugly way because she doesn't want to be reasonable. She don't want to be. And you know that? I did my best. I tried to get a visitation. She refused to participate in the process. And see, that's something else, too. A lot of women want you to be manly, to be masculine, to be on your best behavior while they're acting like a fucking fool. See, that's the, the, the part where the art of holding comes in. You can be yourself. You can stand up for your rights. Because once again, if we had kept to our agreement, my daughter would be right here with me. But since she's like, hey, I don't have to honor an agreement. I can do what I want. I can assault you. I can run to another state. Hmm, that didn't really work out. Didn't work out the way you thought it did. Hmm. And in the future, I guarantee you, it's going to be some painful memories. Because, see, this is one of the things about working hard. And this is one of the things about the art of holding. It sets a legal framework where you can't be God even if the system goes against you. See, that's the thing. Because the only rights you have are the rights that you can enforce. And if you can't enforce them, you can't control your money. You can't control your income. They're going to financially rape you. I can't be raped. I want you to understand that. And this is how powerful this information is because it's not only information that you can use now and in the future. This is information that you can pass on to your sons. So when you look at it from that vantage point, it's very, very inexpensive. All right, so go below. Grab that $99.99 for 20 months. And let's get started developing your masculinity.